Hi everyone, welcome again to the Basic Law and Jurisprudence channel. Uh, this is the series of lectures on property and land laws. Okay, we now begin with uh, the chapter on donations. What is donation? It is an act of liberality whereby a person disposes gratuitously of a thing or right in favor of another who accepts it. Okay, so the underlying principle behind donation is liberality. Okay, so it is what differentiates it from the other modes of acquisition of property. Okay, whereas in ordinary contracts, such as sale, there is always a quid pro quo. Or you give something in exchange for another thing. Okay, in this uh, type of uh, mode of acquisition of ownership, donations, the underlying cause or causa okay, is liberality. Okay, so liberality is what motivated the person donating to dispose of his property or right in favor of another. And the person who receives or the donee must accept the donation. Otherwise, the, don the donation becomes ineffective. Okay. So Article 726 speaks of a remuneratory donation. It is one of the kinds of donation. Let us read Article 726. When a person gives to another a thing or a right on account of the latter's merits or of the services rendered by him to the donor provided that they do not constitute a demandable debt or when the gift imposes upon the donor a burden so let us go to article 726 which is uh, a kind of donation remuneratory as well as modal or onerous donation okay a remuneratory remuneratory donation is when a person gives to another a thing or right on account of the latter's merits or of the services rendered by him to the donor, provided that they do not constitute a demandable debt. So the underlying cause or consideration is also liberality, but the liberality is because of the merits or the services which were rendered by the donor to the donor. So that is what is known as a remuneratory donation, okay? A modal or onerous donation, on the other hand, is when the gift imposes upon the donor a burden which is less than the value of the thing, okay? There is also a donation. So a modal donation is one in which a burden is imposed upon the donor. So it is uh, governed by the law on contracts more than the provisions on donations. Okay. However, the burden must be less than or equal to the thing or right which was donated. Okay. So there is also what is known as conditional, a donation which is subject to a condition. But the condition to be effective must not be illegal or impossible. Okay, Article 727 states that illegal or impossible conditions in simple and remuneratory donations shall be considered as not imposed. So in a remuneratory or a, an, or a simple donation, it can a condition may be imposed either for its effectivity or for its dissolution. For the condition to be valid, it must not be illegal or impossible. Otherwise, if it is illegal or impossible, it shall be considered as not imposed. Okay. There is also the so-called uh, donations inter vivos and donations mortis cosa. Okay. Article 728 speaks of donations mortis causa. Okay. What is it? Donations which are to take effect upon the death of the, donor, of the donor partake of the nature of testamentary provisions and shall be governed by the rules established uh, on the title in succession. 
Okay, so with respect to donations which are to take effect upon the death of the, do the donor, they are considered as testamentary provisions. So they are governed by the rules on succession. Okay. As onerous donations are governed by the rules on contract, okay, do donations which are mortis causa are governed by the rules on succession. Okay, how about donations inter vivos? When the donor intends that the donation shall take effect during the lifetime of the donor, though the property shall not be delivered until after the donor's death, this shall be a donation inter vivos. So the fruits of the property from the time of the acceptance of the donation shall pertain to the donor unless the donor provides otherwise. Okay, so as you all know, okay, the attributes of property may be divided. The naked ownership may belong to one person, while uh, the fruits of the property or the right to enjoy the property may belong to another person, which is not the naked owner. Okay, so also that uh, concept can also be applied to donations. So in donations inter vivos, what is important is that the title or the ownership to the property has already been transferred during the lifetime of the donor. Okay? So it doesn't matter if the enjoyment of the fruits of the property is still okay with the donee or is given to another person. Okay? It doesn't matter. It does not... Uh, take it, uh, strip it of its classification as a donation inter vivos. Okay. Article 731, when a person donates something subject to the resolutory condition of the donor's survival, then there is a donation inter vivos. So if, for example, the donation is subject to the resolutory condition of the donor's survival, then it is classified as a donation inter vivos. Uh, as, as I have said, uh, we have already discussed the kinds of donations. Donations which are to take effect inter vivos shall be governed by the provisions on contracts and obligations in all that is not determined in this title. So donations are primarily governed by the uh, provisions of the rules, provisions of the code on donations. However, insofar as the, the provisions of the code on donation is silent, okay, then the provisions on obligations and contracts can be of supplementary application. Okay. Donations with an onerous cost or modal donations shall be governed primarily by the rules on contracts and remuneratory donations by the provisions of the present title, meaning the provisions of donation. Okay, the donation is perfected from the moment the donor knows of the acceptance by the donor. Okay, the effectivity of donations is um, dependent on the acceptance by the donor. Why? Because no one is forced to receive the liberality coming from another. Okay, so there must be an acceptance of the donation for the donation to become effective. And not only that it must be accepted, the acceptance must be made known to the donor. Okay, the donor must know that the donation has been accepted. Uh, what are the requisites for the validity of donations? First, it is the capacity of the donor to make the donation. Okay, so you, uh, we will learn later who are the persons who are capable of making donations. Okay, normally a person who can enter into contracts, okay, meaning they have the capacity to give intelligent consent to the contract can be donors. Number two, the motive or the cause of the donor is gratitude or liberality in favor of the donor. As I've said, this is what separates donation from 
any other ordinary contracts because the underlying cause for donation is the liberality <laughs> liberality or gratitude in favor of the donor. Number three, there must be acceptance by the donor of the thing or the right donated because the donor is not obliged to receive liberality coming from another. Okay, number four, cognizance by the donor of the acceptance made by the donor. The donor must know that the donation has been accepted for it to become effective. And number five, observance of the form prescribed by law for certain donations. Okay, there are cer uh, certain forms are required for uh, the donation to become valid. Like, for example, real property. There has to be a certain form that has to be observed as well as uh, personal property exceeding 5,000 pesos. It has to be in a certain form. Otherwise, it is not valid. Okay? We have already discussed the kinds of donations. First, among which remuneratory donations. The motivating cause is gratitude for the past services rendered by the donee to the donor. Modal or onerous donations, a burden which is equal or less than the thing or right donated is imposed upon the donor. Donation inter vivos, the donation takes effect during the lifetime of the donor. Donation mortis causa, donation takes effect after the death of the, no the donor and partakes of a testamentary disposition. Simple donations. The consideration is pure liberality or generosity of the donor. Conditional donations, a condition which is either suspensive or resolutory is imposed for the effectivity or extinguishment of the donation. The condition may be uh, imposed on a simple or a remuneratory donation. Donation propter nupias. Donations made by reason of marriage and before its celebration in favor of one or both spouses. Okay, we now go to our first case, De Luna versus Obrigo. De Luna donated a portion of his lot to the Luzonian colleges. However, there is a condition that was imposed by the donor. That condition is the donor will construct a chapel a nursery, and a kindergarten school within three years from the date of the donation. It also provided for automatic reversion to the donor in case the condition is not fulfilled. So the petitioners filed a complaint alleging that the terms and conditions was not complied with by the donor. The Respondent Foundation, however, claimed that it had partially and substantially complied with the conditions of the donation. Okay, the donation subject of this case is one with an onerous cause. Why? Because there is a burden imposed upon the donor. What is that burden? The burden of building the kindergarten, school, and chapel. So it was made subject to the burden requiring the donor to construct a chapel, nursery, and a kindergarten school. Donations with an onerous cost are governed not by the law on donations, but by the rules of the contract. So there is a need to determine whether the violation of the condition is of substantial nature, okay? So as to um, result in the uh, automatic reversion of the donation. Okay, upon the happening of the resolutory condition or non-compliance with the conditions, the donation is automatically revoked without need of a judicial declaration to that effect. Judicial intervention is necessary not for the purpose of obtaining a judicial declaration, rescinding a contract already deemed rescinded by virtue of an agreement providing for rescission even without judicial intervention but in order to determine whether or not rescission was proper. So you do not need to go to court if there is an automatic reversion in the deed of donation. However, if in the uh, it is the contention of the donee that 
uh, there was substantial compliance, then he may file an action in court. And the court will now have the authority to determine whether or not the automatic re uh, recession was proper. The automatic reversion was proper. Okay? Lagaso versus Court of Appeals. Catalina was awarded a lot. Now, she executed a special power of attorney in favor of her son-in-law for him to, to execute all the documents that are necessary for the adjudication of her claim as the awardee of the lot. So, Catalina executed a deed of donation over the said lot in favor of the plaintiff. Okay, now, uh, the plaintiff found out that the installments, there are installments in arrears. And there is a remaining balance on the lot. So he paid the same. So plaintiff sent a demand letter to the defendant appellant asking him to vacate the premises. So there is an occupant of the property. So the occupant, the defendant appellant, refused claiming ownership of the said property on the ground that there was an alleged deed of sale executed by Catalina in his paper. Now, the issue in this case is whether or not the donation was simple or onerous. Okay? Uh, in this case, the Supreme Court differentiated or distinguished between simple and onerous donations. A simple or pure donation is one whose cause is pure liberality, while an onerous donation is one which is subject to burdens, charges, or future services, equal to or more than the value of the thing donated. We rule that the donation was simple, not onerous, even conceding that the payment of the purchase price of the lot might have been a burden. The payment was not, however, imposed by the donor as a condition of the donation. The donor did not have any intention to burden or charge the petitioner as the donor. So the deed of donation does not show any indication that Petitioner Doni accepted the gift. During the trial, he did not present any instrument evidencing such acceptance. So you must remember that uh, to determine whether or not uh, a donation was simple or honest, it is the intention of the donor that is to be consulted. If the donor intends for the donee uh, to uh, perform certain acts or incur certain expenses, okay, then the donation is honest. But if there was no intention, like in this case, on the part of the donor, on the part of the donor to in for the donee to incur certain expenses, like the payment of the remaining uh, arrears on the lot, okay, then the donation is simple. Because it was not imposed as a condition for the donation. Okay, Cuevas versus Cuevas. Antonina executed a notarized conveyance entitled, quote unquote, Donation Mortis Cosa to her nephew Chris Pulo for the northern half of a parcel of unregistered land. Subsequently, the donor executed another notarian instrument entitled. Revocacion de donacion mortis causa. To set aside the preceding conveyance. So uh, the, the issue is whether it embodies a donation inter vivos or a disposition of property mortis causa revocable freely by the transferor at any time before death. It has been ruled that neither the designation of mortis causa nor the provision that a donation is to take effect at the death of the donor is a controlling criterion in defining the true nature of donations. So it doesn't mean that if you entitle the donation as donation mortis causa or that there is a provision that it will take effect upon the death of the donor, it will not determine whether or not the donation is a mortis causa or an inter vivos donation. Okay, there is a conflict in the expression. The donor in the, the in that the donor reserves to herself the right to possession, cultivation, harvesting, and other rights of ownership, while I am not deprived of life by the Almighty, but right after the same, 
the donor states that she will not take away the property because I reserve it for him, the donor, when I die. So what is important in determining whether or not a donation is inter vivos or mortis causa is the transfer of the title or the ownership of the property to the donor during the lifetime of the donor. So in this case, she has reserved, okay, she has reserved the property in, in favor of the donor, okay? Uh, she will not take away the property because I reserve it to him when I die. However, the enjoyment of the fruits of the property was not given to the donor because during the lifetime of the donor, the donor will be the one to enjoy the fruits of the property. So again, the Supreme Court said, the decisive proof that the present donation is operative in terms lies in the final phrase to the effect that the donor will not dispose or take away because I am reserving it to him upon my death. By these words, the donor expressly renounced the right to freely dispose of the property in favor of another. Such irrevocability is characteristic of donations in terms because it is incompatible with the idea of a disposition post-mortem. So the donor intended that she should retain the entire beneficial ownership during her lifetime, but that the naked title should irrevocably pass to the donor. Okay? So we now go to the case of Liges versus Court of Appeals. Upon complaint filed by the petitioner against the heirs of Lopez to recover a parcel of land, plaintiff averred to be its legal owner pursuant to the deed of donation of the said land. Okay, the defense interposed was that the donation was null and void for having an illicit causa, which was the plaintiff's entering into marital relations with Lopez, a married man. So in remuneratory contracts, the consideration is the service or benefit for which the remuneration is given. Causa is not liberality in these cases. Because the contract or conveyance is not made out of pure beneficence, but solvent the Bonuses granted to employees to excite their seal and efficiency with consequent benefit for the employer do not constitute donation having liberality for a consideration. In this case, the late Lopez was not moved exclusively by the desire to benefit the appellant Liges, but also to secure her cohabiting with him so that he could gratify his sexual impulses. Therefore, the donation was but one part of an onerous transaction. Thus, considered the conveyance was clearly predicated upon an illicit causa. So Lopez would not have conveyed the property in question had he known that the appellant would refuse to cohabit with him so that the cohabitation was an implied condition to the donation and being unlawful necessarily tainted the donation itself. Remember, when you place an illicit, illegal condition on a remuneratory donation, okay, uh, the, the uh, donation, the condition taints the donation. So Lopez could not donate the entire property the entirety of the property in litigation to the prejudice of his wife, Maria, because said property was conjugal in character and the right of the husband to donate from community property is strictly limited by law. Okay. We now have the case of Laureta versus Mata, which speaks of a donation in price and Okay, Loretta executed a deed of donation over Mata. Okay. Um, he gave the young Mata a reward for the services which he has rendered. Okay. And the wordings of the donation was that, I hereby donate Mortis Causa to said youth all the properties. So it was uh, accepted by the administrator of the estate uh, of the grantor, Laureta, made a demand upon the defendants for the possession of the land, which was refused. Esther, a widow and the mother of Mata, 
accepted the donation with all the conditions imposed by the donor. Exhibit A is a donation in price and, and conveyed in fee simple title to the lands in question subject only to the life estate of the donor. The conveyance of the lands took effect upon the making and delivery of the deed, reserving a life estate only in the donor. The conveyance itself was not to become effective until the death of the donor. But in legal effect, it recites that an actual conveyance is made subject to the life estate of the donor. In this case, Esther accepted the donation in behalf of her son, and the acceptance is incorporated in the body of the agent. Here, there was a donation and an acceptance, both in the same instrument, which made it a perfected donation. So when the naked ownership okay, is given to the donee, okay, reserving a life estate, meaning the right to receive the fruits of the property okay, to the donor, then there is a donation in present. Okay, and that is uh, an effective or a valid donation. As long as there is an acceptance and the acceptance was made known to the donor. Okay. We have the case of Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila versus Court of Appeals. So in this case, respondents filed a complaint for nullification of the deed of donation and rescission of contract of a property okay, against our camp the Roman Catholic Bishop of Imus Cavite. Okay? They allege that the spouses de Castro executed a deed of donation of uh, a lot in favor of the Arca. Okay? The do there is a condition imposed in the said deed of donation that the donee shall not dispose or sell the property within a period of 100 years from the execution of the deed of donation. Otherwise, a violation of the said condition would automatically make it null and void. Okay? And the property would revert to the estate of the donors. So the Archbishop of Manila subsequently executed a deed of sale, absolute sale of the property in favor of petitioners now. Okay, so the... Uh, Peti, uh, the petitioners, the private respondents are alleging that the condition of the donation was violated. So the deed of donation expressly provides for automatic reversion of the property in case of violation of the condition. Hence, a judicial declaration revoking the same is not necessary. Okay, the rationale is that in contracts providing for automatic revocation, Judicial intervention is necessary not for the purpose of obtaining a judicial declaration rescinding a contract already deemed rescinded by virtue of an agreement providing for rescission even without judicial intervention, but in order to determine whether or not the rescission was proper. So as we have uh, already discussed in the first case, Okay, uh, the judicial declaration of recession, okay, can be filed in court. Okay, or if there is a provision on automatic recession, then the whoever contest, okay, the validity of the recession, okay, can come to court and the court will determine whether or not there was indeed basis for the uh, recession of the donation. Nonetheless, we find that although the action filed by the private respondents may not be dismissed by reason of prescription, the same should be dismissed on the ground that the private respondents have no cause of action. Said condition, in our opinion, constitutes an undue restriction on the rights arising from ownership of petitioners and is therefore contrary to public policy. Remember that illegal or impossible conditions okay, um, will uh, be considered as not imposed. Donation as a mode of acquiring ownerships results in an effective transfer of title over the property from the donor to the donor. Once a donation is accepted, 
the donee becomes the absolute owner of the property donated. Although the donor may impose certain conditions, the same must not be contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, and public policy. The condition imposed in the deed of donation in the case constitutes a patently unreasonable and undue restriction on the right of the donee to dispose of the property donated, which right is an indispensable attribute of ownership. Such prohibition against alienation in order to be valid must not be perpetual or for an unreasonable period of time. Remember the condition imposed in this donation is that the donee will not be able to uh, dispose of the property for a period of 100 years. That is equivalent to perpetual prohibition on alienation. Okay, so the Supreme Court considered it as an uh, illicit or illegal condition because it is contrary to public policy. Okay? It should be declared as an illegal or impossible condition and will be considered as not imposed. We have another case of Castella versus Villafuerte, which is similar to the uh, previous case on Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila. So in this case, province of Camarines Sur, okay, is the registered owner of a parcel of land. Now the province of Camarines Sur donated it to Castella, which is Camarines Sur Teachers Association. Okay. Subsequently, however, the province executed a deed of revocation of the donation. Okay, Castella argued that its acts of leasing out the bodega glassware portion of the building constructed on the donated property does not constitute selling, mortgaging, or encumbering the donated property because in the deed of donation, there is a prohibition on the part of the donee to sell, mortgage, or encumbered the donated property or any of its improvements. Now, they list out a certain portion of the property to bodega glassware. So, the donee shall not sell, mortgage, and cumber the property, including any and all improvements in favor of any party. This donation will be automatically revoked and voided and be of no further force and effect. Okay, again, this is a modal donation. Why? Because there is a burden which is imposed upon the donee. It is one which imposes upon the donee a prestation. The prestation imposed on the donee may either be a burden or a charge inferior in value to the property donated or services to be performed in the future. So there are two prestations imposed on Castella. One is to use the donated property for the purpose for which it is intended and to construct the required building. And the other is not to do, which is not to sell, mortgage, or encumber it to any person. The donation to Castella can properly be classified as a modal donation. The donation may also be classified as an onerous donation because a burden is imposed upon the donor. Now, the issue is whether the donation is classified as modal or onerous. There is no doubt that the rules governing contract should prevail. Because if it is a modal or onerous donation, the provisions on donations is not the one to be applied, but the provisions on obligations on and contracts. So a single violation or non-fulfillment is sufficient to revoke a donation based on the phrase any of the conditions. Its application must be circumscribed with the rules on obligations and contracts wherein substantial and fundamental breach as to defeat the object of the parties in making the agreement and substantial compliance are given due recognition and importance. So while an unregistered lease for more than one year is an encumbrance, the encumbrance was not perpetual as it is time-bound to only 20 years. So the lease is only for 20 years, which is not an unreasonable period. It must be noted as well that the lease had already expired. The lease did not cover the entire donated 600-meter lot 
and the building that Castella constructed, only a portion of the building was So the Supreme Court said that the breach by Castella should be of a permanent character as to totally and perpetually deprive Castella of the use of the donated lot and the building that it constructed. In fine, the revocation of the deed of donation is improper and lacks legal basis. So it is not substantial enough to warrant the revocation of the donation. But the condition was held as valid. It is valid because it is not for an unreasonable period of time. But the uh, alleged breach is not substantial enough as to warrant the revocation of the donation. You have the case of Clemente versus Republic. So in this case, the Clemente siblings were the owners of a parcel of land. Now, they executed a deed of donation over a portion of their property in favor of the Republic. Okay? Under the condition that the lot shall solely be for hospital site and for no other else where a government hospital shall be constructed. However, for unknown reasons, the construction was never completed and only its foundation remains today. So Socorro filed a complaint for revocation of the donation. Okay, The nature of the donation is a donation subject to the condition that the condition being the construction of a government hospital and the use of the property solely for hospital purposes. Because the condition is a resolutory condition, the donation is, if it's revoked, it remains valid unless the donation is revoked. When the part is provided in the deed that the donee should construct a government hospital, their intention was to have the hospital built and completed and to have a functioning hospital on the property. However, a foundation of a building is obviously not a government hospital. So the Supreme Court said the breach was substantial enough to warrant the revocation of the donation. Okay? Rodriguez versus Republic. Rodriguez executed a deed of conditional donation in favor of the Republic for the purpose of constructing a mental facility, okay? with a condition that the donee shall not lease, convey, dispose, or encumber the property or any part to any person except with a prior and express knowledge and approval of the donor. So there is a prohibition on the leasing or uh, alienation or the imposition of any encumbrance on the property unless it is with the prior knowledge and consent of the donor. So the estate uh, filed a case against the Republic for revocation of the donation. It alleged that the Republic allowed a portion of the donated property to be used for residential and commercial purposes. Compare this case with the case of Castella. Uh, uh, the Republic contended that similar to the Arkham case, it constitutes a jurisdiction on the rights arising from ownership and thus is contrary to public policy. So in the case at bar, the donation involved is an onerous one since the burden is to build a mental hospital on the donated property. So the prohibition in the deed of donation that the Republic cannot lease, convey, dispose, or encumber the donated property without specifying the duration of the restriction should be declared as an illegal or impossible condition. This is similar to the Arkham case. In the Arkham, the, the prohibition, although time-bound, 100 years, was declared to be illicit or impossible. Okay. In this case, there is no time, but there is uh, um, there is an express provision that every time that you want to lease, you want to sell, you want to encumber, you have to get the consent of the heirs of the donor. So the Republic already complied with the main prestation of the deed 
which is the construction of the mental hospital and a concrete road from the national highway. The mental hospital continues to operate, which shows that the Republic satisfied the purpose of the donation to exclusively use the donated property for the, for the construction and operation of a mental hospital. So the imposition of a restriction on lease or selling of the donated property okay, uh, without any period okay, was held in that case to be uh, an illicit or impossible condition. Okay, we have the case of National Treasurer versus Mayimban. So in this case, Philomena, during her lifetime, executed a document which is entitled Donation Mortis Causa in favor of her daughter, Paulina, who accepted the donation. However, records disclose that even prior to the execution of the deed of donation, Philomena sold to third party several portions of that lot. Now, the plaintiff filed the action against PBTC seeking partial annulment of the sheriff's certificate of sale because it was foreclosed. Okay, whether it is a donation inter vivos or a donation mortis causa. So, whether a donation is inter vivos or mortis causa depends upon the nature of the disposition made. Did the donor intend to transfer ownership of the property upon the execution of the donation? If this is so, then it is inter vivos. Otherwise, it is merely mortis causa. As I have told you before, what is important is the transfer of ownership of the property during the lifetime of the donor. If there was transfer of ownership, then it is inter vivos. If not, if, it, uh, if the transfer of ownership takes effect upon the death of the donor, then it is mortis causa. Okay. The deed of donation uh, intends to transfer the ownership, much less the possession of the property, to the donee until after the former's death, as evidenced not only by the caption of the deed, but more importantly, by what was expressly provided in the donation itself that the donor retained ownership of the property was further established by the fact that the donor, after executing the above deed, mortgaged the same to PBTC and until her death, did not try to fulfill her obligation in order to free the property from the mortgage. Again. As the donation is in the nature of, of mortis causa disposition, the formalities of a will should have been complied. Because in this case, even after the donation has been executed, the donor mortgaged it and did not, were not was not able to fulfill the obligation for which the property was mortgaged. So there was uh, really no intention to transfer the ownership of the property during her lifetime. So it was properly considered by the court as one, which is mortis causa. And being a mortis causa donation, there is a need to comply with the formalities of a will. We now go to the capacity to donate. Okay, who are the persons who are capable of making a valid donation? Okay, Article 735 tells us all persons who may contract and dispose of their property may make donations. So we now have the age requirement, diba? A person who is 18 years of age and above can make a valid donation. And a person who is of sound who is of sound mind, okay, can make a valid donation. Okay, because they all refer to the capacity to give an intelligent consent to a contract. Okay, the donor's capacity shall be determined as of the time of the making of the donation. So what is important is when you entered into uh, the deed of donation, you have those requirements. You have the capacity to contract as well as dispose of their property. With respect to juridical persons, 
okay, such as corporations, okay, they have the requisite juridical personality. They were they have the requisite uh, registration with the Securities and Exchange Commission, okay. Uh, guardians and trustees cannot donate the property entrusted to them. Why? Because they, they are only caretakers of the properties of their ward. Okay? All those who are not specially disqualified by law may accept donations. However, the following donation shall be void. Okay? Remember huh, the basic uh, principle? All persons who can enter into contracts may also make donations, okay? And their capacity to make donations will be determined at the time of the execution of the of donations. However, there are certain donations which will not be valid because the persons to whom the property was donated was specially disqualified by law to become donors. Okay, these are the following. Those made between persons who were guilty of adultery or concubinage at the time of the donation. Okay, those made between persons found guilty of the same criminal offense in consideration thereof, and those made to a public officer or his wife descendants and ascendants by reason of his office. So in these cases, okay, they per, if the donation was made under the conditions specified in Article 739, this donation shall be considered as void. Okay? Article 740 further tells us that incapacity to succeed by will shall be applicable to donations in terms. So if the person is disqualified to accept by will, he also cannot be qualified to accept donations in terms. What you cannot receive through death, you cannot receive also even if the donation was in terms. Okay, so... We are. We will now discuss the capacity to accept donations. The donee must accept the donation personally or to another person with a special power for the purpose or with a general and sufficient power. Otherwise, the donation will be void. As I've said, the donation must always be accepted. If it is not accepted, the donation becomes ineffective because no one is forced to accept liberality from another person. How do you accept the do a donation? It must be accepted personally, in person, or through an authorized representative. Okay? The acceptance must be made during the lifetime of the donor and of the donor. When should the donation be accepted? Okay, it must be accepted during the lifetime of the donor as well as the donor. Persons who accept donations in representation of others who may not do so by themselves shall be obliged to make a notification and notation of the donation. How about minors and other incapacitated persons? Can they be donees? The minors and others who cannot enter into a contract may become donors, but the acceptance shall be done through their parents or legal representatives. How about unborn children? Can they be donors? Yes, they may. Uh, donations made to conceived and unborn children may be accepted by those persons who would legally represent them if they were already born. How about incapacitated person? Donations made to incapacitated person shall be void, though simulated under the guise of another contract or to a person who is interposed. Okay. Article 744 speaks of double donations. If there are double sales, there is also the thing called double donations. What if same property was donated to two different persons, which will you recognize as valid? Donations of the same thing to two or more 
different Tony shall be governed by the provisions concerning the sale of the same thing to two or more different persons. Okay. We now go to the form of donations as well as the acceptance. The donation of a movable may be made orally or in writing. With respect to movables, form is not that important. So it can be made orally without any document or it can be made in writing. An oral donation requires the simultaneous delivery of the thing or of the document representing the right donated. So the only requirement with respect to oral donation is the simultaneous delivery of the thing or the right donated. However, if the value of the personal property exceeds 5,000 pesos, the donation as well as the acceptance shall be made in writing. Otherwise, it shall void. Okay, Article 749 uh, speaks of the form for donation of immovable property. In order that donation of an immovable property may be valid, it must be made in a public document specifying therein the property donated and the value of the charges which the donor is satisfied. The acceptance may be made in the same deed of donation or in a separate public document but it shall not take effect unless it is done during the lifetime of the donor. Okay, if an acceptance is made in a separate instrument, the donor shall be notified thereof in authentic form, and these steps shall be noted in both instruments. You must remember that with respect to immovable or real property, it is required that the donation as well as the acceptance must be in a public document. What makes it public? Notarization. Okay, when you notarize a document, the same becomes a public document. So it may be in the same instrument, the acceptance, or it may be in a separate instrument. But it is always required that if it is made in a separate instrument, it must be in a public document and it must be made known to the donor during his lifetime. And it, uh, the uh, donor will be notified in authentic form. Okay? So the notification must also be made. Okay? Ah, okay. We now go to the case of Labares versus Guevara. So in this case, Rebe Rebecca died in the state without any issue, leaving several properties among her nearest kings the sons and daughters of her siblings. Now, the petitioners filed an action for reconveyance, partition, and accounting. Respondents alleged that there was nothing to partition since they were not aware of any real or personal properties which their aunt Rebecca had left behind. Okay, said properties were allegedly validly donated to them by Rebecca, resulting to new certificates of title being issued in their names. Now, the issue is whether or not Rebecca possessed the sufficient mentality to make the subject deeds of donation, which would meet the legal test regarding the required capacity to dispose. Okay? Consent in contracts presupposes the following. It should be intelligent or with an exact notion of the matter to which it refers, it should be free. It should be spontaneous. The party's intention must be clear and the attendance of a vice of consent, like any contract, renders the donation voidable. However, the burden of proving such incapacity not rests on the person who alleges it. So it is the contention of the respondents that Rebecca still had full control of her deeds. The fact that she was already of advanced age and that she had to rely on the respondents for care did not necessarily prove that she could no longer give consent to the contract. So to determine the intrinsic validity of the deed of donation, Rebecca's mental state at the time of its execution must be taken into account. Factors such as age, health, and environment and the intricacy of the document should be considered. Rebecca's doctor during her lifetime 
was presented as an expert witness testified that Rebecca had been suffering from dementia, which was more or less permanent and had been taking medications for years. So during the execution of the deeds, Rebecca was already 75 and was confined in the hospital. Okay. Uh, however, in both cases, the court merely sustained the rulings of the trial courts, which had been a, in a better position to appreciate the weight and value of the evidence. So in determining whether or not a person had the requisite uh, mental faculty to make an intelligent consent to, to contract, it is one which is uh, addressed to uh, which is addressed on a case-to-case -case basis. So it would depend on the uh, witnesses that were presented and the burden is upon the person alleging that the person cannot give an intelligent consent to a contract. So he is the one who should prove that the person who made the donation does not have the requisite mental facility to make an intelligent consent. Okay, the case of Republic versus Liamas, the RTC's order required the DPW to pay Liamas a certain amount of money per square meter as compensation for the expropriated portion of a lot. Okay? It denied payment for certain areas and uh, noted that these were subdivision road lots which the Liamas no longer own and, and which belong to the community for whom they were made. Now, the issue is whether just compensation must be paid. Okay, for the subdivision of lots. Okay, uh, the important thing to remember ab about this case is to be considered a donation, an act of conveyance must necessarily proceed freely from the donor's own unrestrained volition. A donation cannot be forced, just like contracts. It cannot arise from compulsion, be borne by a requirement, or be impelled by a mandate imposed upon the donor by forces that are external to him. Conveyances made in view of a demandable debt cannot be considered true or valid donation. Animus donandi, the intent to do an act of liberality, is an indispensable element of a valid donation, along with the reduction of the donor's patrimony and the corresponding increase in the donor's patrimony. In, in this case, the local government should first acquire them by donation, purchase, or expropriation if they are to be utilized as a public road. Okay? We have the case of Missionary Sisters versus Alzoma. Okay, we deal here with the capacity of the donee to accept donations if the donee is a juridical person. So in this case, purification handed to Concepcion a handwritten letter which stated that she is donating her house and lot to the petitioner. Now after purification died, Amanda filed a complaint to annul the deed of donation on the ground that at the time the donation was made, the latter was not registered with the SEC and therefore has no juridical personality and cannot legally accept the donation. Okay, there is no question that the true intent of purification, the donor and owner of the properties, was to give out of liberality the subject house and lot which he owned to the petitioner. The acceptance of the donation is made on the same date that the donation was made and contained in the same instrument. Under Article 737, the donor's capacity shall be determined at the time of the making of the donation. The court finds that for the purpose of accepting the donation, the petitioner is deemed vested with personality to accept and mother conception is clothed with authority to act on the latter's behalf. Clearly, at the time that the donation was made, the petitioner cannot be considered as a corporation de facto. 
jurisprudence it calls for the application of the doctrine of corporation by estoppel. Do the doctrine of corporation by estoppel applies for as long as there is no fraud and when the existence of the association is attacked for causes attendant at the time of the contract or dealing sought to be enforced was entered into and not thereafter. So the uh, missionary sisters were classified as corporation by estoppel and therefore the donation was considered as valid even though at the time when the donation was accepted, the missionary sisters are still not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. We now go to the case of Insular Life versus Ebrado. So in this case, the issue is, can a common law wife named as beneficiary in the life insurance policy uh, of a legally married man claim the proceeds thereof in case of death of the latter? So in this case, Ebrado was issued by Insular Life a policy. He designated Carponia as a as her revocable beneficiary. When Ebrado died, Carponia filed with the insurer a claim for the proceeds. Although she admits that she and the insured were merely living as common law spouses. Now Pasquala also filed her claim for the insurance proceeds as the widow of uh, Ebrado. Common law spouses are barred from receiving donations from each other. A life insurance policy is no different from a civil donation insofar as the beneficiary is concerned. You must remember that common law spouses, those who are guilty of adultery or concubinage at the time of the donation, these are persons who are specially disqualified by law to become donors. So uh, they are not allowed to accept donations. The prescription in Article 79 equally applies on life insurance contracts. Any person who cannot receive a donation cannot be named as beneficiary in the life insurance policy of the person who cannot make the donation. Policy considerations and dictates of morality rightly justify the institution of a barrier between common law spouses in regard to property relations since such relationship ultimately encroaches upon the nuptial and filial rights of the legitimate family. Uh, a beneficiary in a life insurance policy is no different from a donor. Both the recipients of your beneficence, so long as marriage remains the threshold of family loss, reason and morality dictate that the impediments imposed upon married couple should likewise be imposed upon extramarital relationships. Remember, in your persons and family relations, the husband and wife are prohibited during the marriage from, don from donating to each other. So if there is such a prohibition with respect to married couples, then that prohibition should likewise apply to extramarital relationships. Okay. We now go to the... Uh, Provisions of the Code on Limitations of Donations. What are the properties that you are allowed to donate? And what are the restrictions on the properties that you are prohibited to donate? Okay, Article 750 tells us that the donation may comprehend all the present property provided he reserves in full ownership or in use of rock. Sufficient means for the support of himself and of all relatives who, at the time of the acceptance of the donation, are entitled by law to be supported by the donor. Without such reservation, the donation shall be reduced in petition of any person affected. So, the important thing to remember is that you can donate all of your present property. Remember the word present, ha? provided that you have reserved sufficient property for to support yourself as well as your relatives whom you are entitled to support. 
Do you remember the provisions on support, di ba? The uh, spouses, your children, the ascendants, descendants, okay? Brothers and sisters, whether of the full or half blood. Okay, so you can donate all of your present property, provided that you have reserved sufficient property to support yourself as well as the relatives that you are obliged to support. Okay. Donations cannot comprehend future property. So what you can donate is only limited to present property. You cannot donate future property. What do you mean by future property? It is anything which the donor cannot dispose of at the time of the donation. Because you cannot give what you do not have. If you still are not the owner of that property, then you have no power to dispose it. Okay? Also, another limitation on donation, no person may give or receive by way of donation more than what he may give or receive by will. The donation shall be inofficious in all that it may exceed this limitation. So, a person is only allowed to donate okay, the free portion of his property. Meaning, he cannot donate the portion of his property which is reserved by law to his compulsory heirs when he dies. Okay? So in so far as it exceeds that portion of the property which is reserved by law as legitimate to his compulsory heirs, it will be declared void for being in officious. Okay? So the first Limitation on donation is that you can donate only your present property subject to preservation uh, for the support of yourself as well as the relatives entitled to your support. And you cannot donate future property. And also you, con you cannot donate uh, in excess of the uh, you cannot donate uh, the property which is reserved by law okay, as legitimate to your compulsory heirs. Okay, those are the limitations on donation. In other words, to put it in a more positive light, you can only donate the free portion of your properties. But when you say free portion, it is the portion which is in excess of the legitimate reserved by law for your compulsory heirs. Okay. Let us now go to the effect of donations. Okay. Donations to several persons join. When a donation is made to several persons, it is understood to be in equal shares and there shall be no right of accretion among them unless the donor has otherwise provided this will not be applicable to donations made to husband and wife jointly between whom there shall be right of accretion. So, for example, there is a donation of six hectares of land okay, to three persons. So, so, there will be two hectares per person or per domain. Okay. What if um, uh, one of them perishes? Does it mean that the two hectares will be divided equally between uh, the remaining two donies? The answer is no, because there will be no right of accretion among them, unless they are, of course, husband and wife. Okay. Subrogation by the donie. The donie is subrogated to all the rights and actions, which in case of eviction would pertain to the donor. Okay, the donor will be liable for eviction or hidden defects in case of bad faith on his part. Okay, we also have donation with reservation. The right to dispose of some of the things donated or of some amount which shall be a charge thereon may be reserved by the donor. But if he dies without having made use of this right, the property or amount reserved shall belong to the donor. 
naked ownership as well as the use of truck. The ownership of the property may also be donated to one person and the use of truck to another. Ito nga yung donation in private or others provided all the donors are living at the time of the donation. Okay? Effect of donation. Donation subject to reversion. Reversion may be validly established in favor of only the donor for any case and circumstances, but not in favor of other persons unless they are all living the time of the donation. Any reversion stipulated in favor of a third person in violation of what is provided shall be void but shall not nullify the donation. Meaning the reversion would still be uh, the reversion. The donation will still be valid. Only the stipulation on the reversion will be void. So the only requirement with respect to the stipulation in reversion is that um, it is always made in favor of the donor, but not in favor of other persons unless they are all living at the time of the donation. Okay. Liability of the donor to pay the debts of the donee. When the donation imposed upon the donee, to, the obligation to pay the debts of the donor, uh, the former is understood to be liable only to pay the debts which appear to have been previously contracted. In no case shall the donee be responsible for the debts exceeding the value of the property donated unless a contrary intention clearly appears. There being no stipulation regarding payment of debts, the donee shall be responsible therefore only when the donation has been made in fraud of creditors. It will be presumed to be in fraud of creditors when at the time of the donation, the donor did not reserve sufficient property for himself to pay his debts prior to the donation. Because donation can also be a vehicle to avoid payment of debts. Okay? The case of Osorio versus Osorio. So in this case, upon his death, his heirs agreed to authorize the defendant, then administratrix of the estate, to present a pro project of partition. The widow of Osorio, Petrona, executed a document of gift in favor of her son. In other words, a donation in favor of Leonardo, giving him one half of her share in the one-third part which belonged to her husband, in the shipping business of Inchausti, a donation which was duly accepted by Leonardo. A donation cannot include future property. So when you speak of future property, it is understood that which the donor cannot dispose of at the time of the making of the donation. So in this case, the Supreme Court pronounced, we believe that the future properties, the donation of which, are those belonging to others, which cannot be the object of disposal by the donor, but the properties of an existing inheritance, as those in the case at bar, cannot be considered as another's property with relation to the heirs who, through a fiction of law, continue the personality of the owner. His heirs acquired a right to succeed him from the moment of his death, according to which the heirs succeed the deceased by the mere fact of his death. An inheritance already existing, which is no longer future from the moment of death of the predecessor, may legally be the object of contract. So in other words, the share in Inchausti is not considered as future property because from the moment of death of the decedent, there is an effective transfer of ownership by succession to the heirs. So, that can already be the subject of a donation. Okay. And then we have the case of Santos versus Santos. In this case, during his lifetime, Gregorio donated the lot to Rolando, which the latter accepted, and title was transferred to the petitioner. Constantia filed a complaint for partition and reconveyance against the petitioner on the ground that 
she learned that the donation is inofficious as she was deprived of her legitimacy. Whether the donation is considered as inofficious. Inofficiousness may arise only upon the death of the donor, as the value of the donation may then be contrasted with the net value of the estate of the donor deceased. Gregorio did not sell the lot to petitioner, he donated it. The trial court found that the donation is inofficious as it impairs the respondent's legitimacy that at the time of Gregorio's death, he left no property other than the lot in controversy. Gregorio could not donate more than he may give by will. By donating the entire lot to petitioner, the Gregorio's donation is inofficious as it deprives respondent of her legend. Okay, you cannot donate, okay, if uh, the uh, donation will be will impair the uh, compul the legitimate of your compulsory heirs. So we now go to revocation or reduction of donations. Okay, what are the causes which may give rise to the revocation or reduction of donations? So we have the birth appearance or adoption of a child. Every donation intervals made by a person having no children or descendants, legitimate or legitimated or illegitimate, may be revoked or reduced as provided by the happening of any of these events. Okay, we are speaking here of a person ha, who has no child, whether legitimate, legitimated, or illegitimate. So the donation made by this person may be revoked by the happening of any of the following. If the donor, after the donation, should have legitimate or legitimated or illegitimate children, even though they be post -leaders. So meaning after the donation was made, that person subsequently had a child. Doesn't matter whether the status of the child it's legitimate, legitimated, or illegitimate. As long as the condition is only that he had a child after the donation. And it does not matter whether that child was born after he already died. Okay? If the child of the donor, uh, whom the latter believed to be dead when he made the donation, should turn out to be living. Okay, and if the donor should subsequently adopt a minor child. So in these cases, okay, the donation may be revoked or reduced. Okay. The donation shall be revoked or reduced in so far as it exceeds the portion that may be freely disposed of by will, taking into account the whole estate of the donor at the time of the birth, appearance, or adoption of a child. The basis of the revocation or reduction is the value of the estate of the donor at the time of the birth, appearance, or adoption of the child and not the value of the estate at the time of the death of the donor. Why? Because before when he made the donation, he had no compulsory heirs, right? So all of these assets are free portions and may be do validly donated. But once a child appears, Okay, after the donation was made, okay, then that person who donated the donor will have compulsory heirs. Okay, so the compulsory heirs will be entitled to a legitimate. Okay, and that is the reason why the donation which was previously made may be re revoked or reduced insofar as it interferes with the free portion or with the with the compulsory legit with the legitimate of the compulsory heir. Okay. Upon the revocation or reduction of the donation by the birth, appearance or adoption of a child, the property affected shall be returned or its value if the donee has sold the same. So the action for revocation or reduction shall prescribe after four years from the birth of the per first child or from his legitimation, recognition, or adoption, or from the judicial declaration of filiation, 
or from the time information was received regarding the existence of the child believed to be dead. This action cannot be renounced and is transmitted upon the death of the donor to his legitimate and illegitimate children and descendants. So we have the case of Oracion versus Principe. Principe lived and grew up with the spouses who had no children. So the land was donated to Principe. Upon Perolina's death, Cecilio married Bar Barbara. Pasita was born unto the, this marriage. Cecilio subsequently died. Now Pasita contended that with her birth, the donation in favor of Principe was automatically revoked. She inherited the property. Principe's contention is that the land was a conjugal property of Cecilio with his first wife, Perelina, that the donation was only partially revoked by reason of the birth of Pasita, that the donation was not revoked as to the one half of the property. Both the revocation and the return of the property to the donor or his heir are not self-operative or self-executory. And if the donor should refuse to part with the property, to resort to judicial action should be taken. Failure to comply with the condition. The donation shall be revoked at the instance of the donor when he fails to comply with any of the conditions which the former imposed upon the latter. So in this case, the property donated shall be returned to the donor, the alienation made by the donor, and the mortgages imposed thereon being void. This action shall prescribe after four years from the non-compliance with the condition may be transmitted to the heirs of the donor and may be exercised against the donor's heirs. So the term conditions refer to resolutory conditions as well as the burdens or charges imposed upon the donor. So another ground by which uh, a donation may be revoked is by reason of ingratitude. So the first one is the appearance of a compulsory heir through the birth, adoption, or appearance of a child. Now, another one is ingratitude of the donor. So in this case, the donation may also be revoked at the instance of the donor by reason of ingratitude in the following cases. If the donor should commit some offense against the person, the owner, or the property of the donor or his wife or children under his parental authority. Okay, so the commission of an offense against the donor, his wife, or children under his parental authority. The second ground is if the donor imputes to the donor any criminal offense or any act involving moral turpitude even though he should prove it unless the crime or the act has been committed against the donor himself by his, his wife or children under his authority. So mere accusation okay, by the donor to the donor of any criminal offense or any act involving moral turpitude, even if he proves the same. Unless, of course, that offense is committed against the donor himself, okay, his wife or children. Okay. Third ground is if he unduly refuses him support when the donor is legally or morally bound to do so. Okay. If there was uh, a need for support on the part of the uh, donor, but then the donor refuses to give support. So in all these cases, uh, the the uh, donation may be revoked on account of ingratitude. When the donation is revoked for any of these causes, the donor shall not return the fruits except from the filing of the complaint. The action granted to the donor by reason of ingratitude cannot be renounced in advance. This action prescribes within one year 
to be counted from the time that the donor had knowledge of the fact and it was possible for him to bring the action. This action shall not be transmitted to the heirs of the donor if the latter did not institute the same, although he could have done so, and even if he should die before the expiration of one year. So it is, uh, in other words, waivable. So the the uh, action to revoke the donation okay, uh, is given by law okay, to the donor. And if the donor refuses to exercise the same within the period given by law, then it cannot be transmitted to his heirs. Okay, Eduarte versus Court of Appeals. A donation is an act of liberality. So in this case, instead of being accorded recognition and appreciation for his act of beneficence, the donor ends up as a victim of greed and ingratitude. He executed a deed, a donation inter vivos, ceding the one-half portion of his land to his niece, claiming that his signature to the deed of donation was a forgery and that she was unworthy of his liberality, Pedro bro brought a suit against Helen uh, as well as the church and the spouses Eduarte to revoke the donation made in favor of Helen. The petitioners argue that as the offense imputed to the donee, is falsification of a public document. It's not a crime against person nor property, but a crime against public interest. The same is not a ground for revocation. Okay, the Supreme Court said all crimes which offend the donor show ingratitude and are causes for revocation. There is no doubt that the donee who commits adultery with the wife of the donor gives cause for revocation by reason of ingratitude. The crimes against the person of the donor would include not only homicide, physical injuries, but also illegal detention, threats and coercion. Those against honor include offenses against chastity, and those against property include robbery, theft, usurpation, swindling, arson, and damages. So obviously, the first sentence was deleted because it totally controverts their contention. All crimes which offend the donor show ingratitude and are causes for revocation. It, not, it need not be strictly a crime against person or honor. Okay? All crimes which offend the donor is a ground for revocation to in gratitude. Okay. In officious donations. What are in officious donations? Donations which, in accordance with the provisions of the preceding article, are in officious, bearing in mind the estimated net value of the donor's property at the time of his death shall be reduced with regard to the excess. But this reduction shall not prevent the donations from taking effect during the life of the donor nor shall it bar the donee from appropriating the funds. Okay? Only those who at the time of the donor's death have a right to the legitimate and their heirs and successors may ask for the reduction of inofficious donation. The donees, devices, and legatees who are not entitled to the legitimate and the creditors of the deceased can neither ask for the reduction nor avail themselves thereof. If there being two or more donations, the disposable portion is not sufficient to cover all of them, those of the more recent date shall be suppressed or reduced with regard to the excess. Okay, so that is all for donations. Thank you for listening.